This work session of the Lou Ray Town Council will now come to order. Will you please stand and join me for a moment? Join me for a moment of silence. I'll ask Councilman Vickers to lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Danielle, will you call the roll? Mayor Baltimore? Here. Mr. Vickers? Yes. Ms. Lillard? Here. Mr. White? Mr. Pettit? Here. Did he say? He said here. Mr. Sowers? Here. And Mr. Webb? Here. Okay, um, Mr. Burke, just you're up. Uh, first item for council's discussion tonight is a special use permit application to in, uh, install a manufactured home at 8 Fry Lane in the R3 high density residential district. Um, the planning commission conducted a uh, public hearing at their May 10th meeting and unanimously recommended approval. Uh, with it complying with town code section 402.3.E. All right, council, any questions, concerns? We were looking at this, it's the applications to replace a modular home that was there originally? Yes, sir. It was destroyed, yes, yes sir. Is it a modular or a mobile home? Manufactured. Manufactured. Two piece. And he, well, my, my understanding is he's looking at both manufacturer that doesn't qualify and then the, the ones that do qualify, but he wants to just have his bases covered. So personal that, property or not personal property, right? Because uh, correct. Well, well, <coughs> meets the building code, but the Virginia building code, it mm -hmm. doesn't meet the building code. I was up there the other day and it, uh, check out the habitat houses, and it seems like a good fit right mm -hmm. there. Oh, I, it, it, you can literally see where they had the, the, the building there number of years ago so it it, it it makes sense why does the property have that cut out in it I'm just curious uh, for the road access so that property doesn't have access to that road it's not in the what, deed what? or something it does I, I, I why Fry it looked Lane like extended a partial through, was yes. weird. why it extended through I don't know okay. uh, it may have been that at one time, it was going to link up to 49A or 52. Um, okay. Don't know. I can't give you an answer. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? Again, this is information only. We'll vote on it at our next meeting on the permit. Anybody else? All right, Steve, keep going. Uh, yes, sir. Next uh, special use permit application for council's consideration at your June meeting is a request to uh, operate a lodging house at 178 Allison Drive. Uh, Planning Commission conducted a public hearing and recommended approval with the conditions that it comply with Town Code Section 519. Uh, also that guests shall not stay longer than 14 days and that a special use, the special use permit would not transfer upon sale or membership interest composition of the holding. One thing that would be interesting to see, I know that we use that uh, website. I can't remember what you said it was called now. It's like the, to see who all is on Airbnb in our town. Can we get some numbers on how many units there are? Is that something that, that can also spit out? How many uh, units are available and how many nice people that know. equates yeah. to, wouldn't it? The, um, I think the service, the subscription is called AirDNA. Um, That's it, yeah. We did not subscribe, but we do... Um, sort of piggyback off of the county, but I'm, I'm definitely willing to reach out to them and see if they would provide us a um, more current report. Um, I believe it's something that they run monthly, so we can definitely reach out to them and, and see. Yeah, that'd be great. It'd be good to just know how many beds we have in the town of Luray, you know. Is that only the Airbnb platform, or does that cover all short-term rentals? I believe it covers all short-term rentals. Yeah, any that are on those platforms, mm -hmm. like Verbo and Airbnb. Um, Airbnb. Yeah. Um, also, well, I guess if you just if you send that to us, I would be curious if Josh with our GIS department, if he would um, 
map that for us. We, our GIS did that over in Shenandoah County. It's interesting to kind of be able to look at the map and see where it's heavily populated, what areas, I think. Because in that report, they get the coordinates as well, so she can send that up to him. Okay. I'm, I'm also curious how much people get for things. I don't have a, a big picture in my head. I mean, all these little townhouses might be about the same, but I wondered about if it's a cottage middle of town, if that's getting double the amount or not. Mm -hmm. it's just, if somebody asks me, I have no idea because I don't look them up. And, and I mean, amenity, I mean, it's, it's a lot of variables in it as to how they can price it. But, okay. But that report tells you what the average daily rate is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Because when I look at this application, I have no clue why a person would want to rent their house for a couple weeks a year. I mean, do they just go away and vacation maybe? Well, this gentleman here, he was from Maryland, I think, right? So says he's living here now so maybe he has some opportunity to get out of town that, that <laughs> lifestyle is new to me is what i'm saying now I mean, the, some of the previous applicants indicated that they were flight attendants that they okay. uh, also had uh, jobs that would have them travel quite frequently and then rather than leaving the the the, the building the, the the home empty it just gave them the opportunity to make some money while they were away How many, are, how many new ones are building out there now? Uh, there are 32 uh, under construction now in that neighborhood, I think. Uh, we've, we've, we're in the process of issuing another eight or 16 um, I, I zoning permits for it. So it, it's moving. Well, the last time I looked, there's a whole other set of... Mm -hmm. A street back, I guess, would spot the middle yeah, for Baker, another road. Yeah, Baker Drive is being developed. In between there is Caterpillar. Caterpillar. And we understand that uh, Baker and and uh, Horton are working to uh, resolve the, the the sale of that strip of uh, that those homes as well as well as Ray Court. So ultimately, we'll have 220 odd in that neighborhood out there. It's going to be connected to West Lou, isn't it? Raycourt will be, and then ultimately Caterpillar will be, yes, sir. But that's okay. further down. That's going to be a busy little spot in town now, that many people. Do we know how many residences we had prior? Do we have that figure? Prior to the pet, like two years ago, before people started building? Uh, historically, we've had a population of about 47, 4,800 people. Mm -hmm. It will be so interesting. So, like 1,500. 1,800 homes, something like that, in the town of Luray, or dwelling units? Well, we've got, what, 2,200 utility accounts? Yeah, we issue about okay. 20, 22, 2,300 utility okay. accounts, and that doesn't in include apartments and things like that. Does that so include business yes. utility accounts? Okay. Mm -hmm. That includes all those homes. We used to get about, what, six to 12 new, uh, new home permits a year, and <laughs> look where we are now. Yeah. <laughs> it's incredible. But so what you're saying is this is in excess of, we're seeing, what is that? 50, probably 15 percent uh, increase oh, in housing units in the than past when the moon field two, when that was built. I mean, this this surge in housing. It's huge. It's, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, and you figure we were at uh, the one, the uh, Lou Ray uh, Meadows, and all that. You got to add all that one. Yeah, adding all those together. Yeah, you're probably 15 percent or more. And then the Ramsey uh, homes that are being constructed out on, on Reservoir. So there is quite a lot of activity. Well, it seems like this this P and D has been on the books for what 20 years, and they could never do anything. Mm -hmm. and, but it's happening so fast right now. It's, I'm getting my head around it. I mean, it's got to be a lot of money coming in for all the hookups. And if we're not spending that much, because we're not extending the sewer lines that much, but I guess we did have to build that pump station. Yeah, the lift station is point one or whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, un unfortunately, any more the infrastructure costs for lift stations. The, the tank that we'll need to build out there, the water tank. Uh, so we probably won't be banking a lot of okay. facility fees, but we're getting good projects out of those, out of the, the facility fees well, coming in that neighborhood. Is the water tank going to be like on stilts like we see? Uh, the ground mount, it'll, it'll be Just be like the one we have at the water plant? The water plant, yes, sir. Okay. So it won't look like it's something that's odd. Well, you, you shouldn't be able to see it from too far away, no, sir. It, mm -hmm. it should be. It should blend into the 
to the area. All right, anybody else? Okay, Steve, keep going. Uh, last item that we had for consideration or discussion tonight, uh, Jennifer Jenkins and, and Brian have been working on developing a plan to uh, add some landscaping to the roundabout. Uh, unfortunately, the costs associated with that project are in the neighborhood of thirty-five to forty thousand uh, dollars. We did not budget any of this, um, so. We wanted to present that to y'all because we know that, that this has been an, an, a, a topic of, of concern with, with some of the residents of trying to make that roundabout look better. Um, one thing that we could look at doing, this was a, a full build out of the 40-foot the inner ring. Um, we could scale that back to be a 20-foot uh, and it would probably reduce the cost somewhat but we wanted to talk with you all to see what kind of thoughts you had as to uh, how to proceed with this and, and what, what you'd like staff to, to come up with. Have you all reached out to the county to see if they're willing to partner with us on that? We could. Uh, I would recommend it. Yeah. Well, my initial reaction was this thing's so new, we just spent the money for it. I say leave it alone for three to five years. Um, we let it mellow a little bit. That's a lot of money to spend just to tear some out that just got poured. I agree. That's my concern with the two. When we're looking at almost fourteen thousand dollars to take out new concrete just, yeah, that was just poured, the and then the cost of, the of that concrete when it was poured. Now I know that was VDOT funds too, but I mean it's still all taxpayer funds. So you look at if this would have been caught before the project was complete, if it would have been noticed that hey, it'd be nice to have some green space in the center of that, then yes, you know if the plans would have included it then and. Isn't that what I asked you know, about? Well, yeah. Unfortunately, VDOT does not construct pretty roundabouts. Oh, right. You can't, right. The, you, if, right. if it's a VDOT project, the, the only way that they were going to construct this was with no landscape. But the other, there are other ones, other parts of the state. I always thought it was going to be just grass in the middle. Mm -hmm. And there are other ones that I know that are grass. But, I mean, I agree. I mean, I don't feel like we just did it, turn around, pull up concrete. seems kind of silly. I just thought maybe putting some simple planters something you know we might spend four or five thousand dollars just dressing it up a little bit uh, that was kind of my thought um, we did talk uh, Jennifer has some concern because of all of the, the concrete that's out there if we were to put in even raised beds the heat uh, the heat will cook yeah it's, so it would be a almost constant water and just put some put some cactus out. in there maybe yeah. <laughs> well and it's a it's a hard maintenance area because there's not anywhere to get off uh -huh. I mean when if it was done and, and what's proposed here, when you look at all that vegetation, the different stuff, it would be beautiful, but the maintenance that's going to take and the accessibility to do that maintenance, it, it's tricky. And um, no, I mean, I'm not opposed to the pretty side of it, and I wish it was this, but just as you said, Ron, I, for what kind of money this is talking about spending and the fact that it's new concrete there, I'd almost rather this be down the road to where when this gets to the point that maybe it needs some repairs or it needs some things, that would be the time I feel that. Well, we haven't even been a whole year yet. So yeah, we don't, you know, I mean, I'm, talking about, the I'm talking about many years down the road. If When this gets to the point that something needs to be redone, that it'd be changed at that point. But I like the idea of that sidewalk project that you're going to get going. <coughs> Three years. Yeah, I think we can... Yeah, I'd rather see this money I'd go to something that like happen. that. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you know when they take up the, uh, <laughs> the the field turf on these places, that stuff's real cheap. We could just get a big round circle of uh, <laughs> turf out there. Or you could put artificial <laughs> put it in grass. That would look better, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, I mean, it would look better. Yeah, I mean, it's it's nothing. Uh, it's concrete. We could stain it some color just to yeah. break it up if if, if y'all want us to to look at that. So. There, there, there are staining it options. would look yeah because it's the make curing it, compound make on it now it's just white LDI you what uh, LDI make a design contest and see what comes up it's outside the downtown district well then maybe get the <laughs> Virginia Tech folks that used to give us plans for everything well there's something to think about too just up where the intersection that was taken out mm -hmm. um, that connects to 211 the old end of Main Street you know, that was different garden clubs or whatever that did that median there 
and then that was a lot of work and that eventually sort of went by the wayside because of the work involved in the maintenance and the time and everything you know there for several years it was pretty but pretty doesn't happen without money and labor and all that to make it work so people have high hopes and they say we want volunteer to do all this but then as the season progresses you get a little bit tired of doing it then they have to bush hog it <laughs> well the cost of something like this is i mean this is a huge initial cost but even once it's done it's continued it, it's it's a maintenance cost from here on i don't know all the plants just can you, somebody tell me how tall some of the things might get they weren't they're they can all be feet. like that okay yeah, it, it was intended to be just low low level mm. plantings I, um, Any other thoughts on the I hesitate to say this. Want to hold off on that for a while? I, Alex, Alex has something to say. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. I hesitate to say this because I guess you don't want somebody paying too much attention to the middle of the roundabout, but maybe somebody would paint something nice on it. I mean, I could see like a, a compass or a minimalist map as you enter Luray. I don't know. <laughs> like a mural almost. You can do something, yeah. Episode. Totally I mean, a random thought. I, mean, I, I like that better than the whole thing with it. I mean, just I don't geometric something. That just you want people looking over there when they should be watching. <laughs> <laughs> Where they ought to be. They put directional arrows. <laughs> <paint them on>. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, VDOT's design is simplistic in what they've done, and there's a reason for that too. And it's the safety of it, mm -hmm. because you're entering something that you're looking for traffic in every direction 360 degrees you're basically looking well and then behind you you're, you're looking for traffic so the whole principle there is safety and cars entering and leaving that roundabout so we can't forget that that that's the true purpose of it is to move traffic yeah. all right anybody else i like it i like what, what we're talking about here I, I think these things are more important than maybe we give them credit the beautification of things. I mean, oh, I agree. You know, it's. I just wish it would have been done at the beginning. Uh, uh, certainly. Right. So, but it, it's the same thing. That's a that's the that's a sunk cost fallacy, right? It's that's done. So it's now. Is it is it? What, how much value does this add to our town? Is really the question. Uh, I'm not suggesting we just drop forty grand right now for this thing, but these things are valuable. I'm feeling like Leroy here. Let's. Let's wait a while before we do it. I, I'm not saying yeah. to do it now anyways. I'm just saying I don't want to discount the value of something. Right. Like well, I agree with that. You know, <laughs> it, it is kind of plain Jane it, it, It's Yeah, it's kind of, it's not an eyesore. It's just cold, right? Mm -hmm. it, it kind of is an eyesore, I guess. Yeah, I was like, oh, <laughs> I have to think an eyesore is appropriate. Yeah. Well, the it's things that were on Facebook is a lot of other words we get that were used. Well, it, it's the Western <laughs> entrance into Luray, and, and any time that we can do something to showcase yeah. Luray is, is, is a positive. I think maybe a mural. I think what Alex said might be a good idea. Let's look at that maybe. Graphic sign or something. Well, you also got to think, too. All you're coming in there. It's a roundabout. <laughs> yes, you need to focus where you're driving. But looking there at the singing tower and the bushes and, and the, 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 the park and everything that's there, I mean, it's not like this is a horrible-looking area. It's There's beauty all around it. It's just not in the center of the road. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah currently takes away from all of it but <laughs> yeah I mean, yeah it's oof. anyways and part of the appeal that what 50, 12 15 years ago now at this point um was that it would be this neat quaint kind of a thing in the town that also served a purpose we needed so. remember there's also supposed to be a neighborhood south of there that was also kind of mm -hmm. part of the, mm -hmm. the it's true. Idea. yeah that's another outstanding pnd that might come online any day well still could be one day right Tell me about that, like I'm another neighborhood. Tell me. Well, that was at Loray Heights. Um, it was approved probably in eight or nine um, for that 130 acres back there, and they showed yeah, that okay. entrance coming okay. into that roundabout. So that was another kind of. That was another consideration back right, then. Right, right yeah. for okay. for that, right. But it hadn't happened, but I guess it could one day. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it was approved, right? Right, yeah, yeah. it was approved. Mm -hmm. That's a huge piece of property. It goes from yeah. All the way out to all the way over to uh, Forest Hills and mm -hmm. Court Street and up to the hospital. It was the old Men a lot of it was the old Menifee property, and mm -hmm. yeah, that's a huge piece of property right, right in the middle of town. Mm -hmm. All right, anybody else? We just want to leave this for a while. Yeah. All right, uh, that's the only thing we have on the agenda. Anybody, you have your survey to. 
interesting reading. We'll take those home, read them. Let's discuss it at some point. Um, again, anybody else have anything to bring up? Um, just a couple announcements. Again, we have uh, the, um, what's the group having the luncheon next Wednesday, the 31st? Uh, VG, what? Yeah, there are, Vision Technology, there are IT consultants. And we're invited to the Valley Court from 11 to 2. I have to stay open 11 to you, just come in and eat and leave or chat and eat and leave. Um, I think you all got the DuPage County uh, Public Schools, the uh, Community Partnership thing, Tuesday, June 13th. And that's in, I think, you're, uh, on your emails, the time on that. Um, anybody else have anything? I, I was reading just briefly some of the comments there. When we adopted the ordinance for the blight, I'm just curious what what if I mean is there any in the pipeline any properties that we're looking at for pursuing as it relates to well the uh, code part of part of your FY 24 budget right. includes yes. funding so that when we pursue a property if the property owner fails to do anything the town does ha then have the ability to pursue some kind of reclamation of the site right um, so uh, I think every member of council knows that there's probably a good handful of, of properties that they would love to, to see us go through it. I know that the mayor, uh, the, the Micromac building on, on West Main Street is, is a priority. So um, once we reach July, I think we'll come back to y'all and say these are some of the properties that we can pursue. Uh, the funding isn't enough to go after every pro property, but if we start going Our after yep. one or two, at least it gets the, the word out to property owners that we will get to you and, and, and we encourage you to pursue some reclamation. Um, along those lines, uh, Brian was able to get a contractor out to the, the Blue House at Mead and, and Jordan. The roof had flown off of it and we were able to uh, get a contractor to bend it back down to secure it and we're in the process of placing a lien on that property. So the smaller things that we are able to to do the police department is getting into into high grass season so um, we are, we're already getting a couple of properties that have the grass that's high enough that it qualifies for us to pursue uh, contracted mowing of the property which then translates to another lien on the property so we are pursuing zoning compliance where we can this, this is a big step, I think, because to my knowledge, we've never done this before. You know, call someone to do something their property that they wouldn't normally do. Do we know of other areas around us that's done this and have they've had success or it's been a lot of pain or? Well, um, a number of areas go the next step and actually purchase the property. The town has done that before, purchase property to de demolish the property, uh, to the structures on the property. It's just an expensive endeavor, and you've got to the, the the some of the places that have done it. They've gone through and then they've sold it for uh, new new development. Uh, it's it's a gamble, but it, it is something that communities have been able to do. Well, since I've been here, we have that house over at Ralph Dean that somebody lived in and passed away. Then we talked about demolishing it, and then we, it just went away for some reason. I mean, what's the deal on that? We, we own that house, right? We own that house. Somebody uh, might say that's derelict and we should take care of our own stuff. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's empty, but it's not in any state. Yeah, it doesn't look any state nearly as bad as some of the other properties. Right. right. Yeah, we yeah. Do, it's not an asshole. Yeah. We, we do maintain it. Vacant, but now, the, the plan is, is ultimately when, uh, when Dean Park gets developed, there has been discussion about putting in uh, basketball court or tennis courts at the entrance that building would get demolished that way um, there's additional I didn't, I didn't realize basketball court could go there I thought we talked about a whole bunch of <laughs> we, we talked over there but there's there's multiple locations that that courts could go in it there was even a place for a dog park at one point somebody said um, I don't think our plan ever included. I know there was talk. There was talk. There may have been dis yeah, there's there's discussion of a number of facilities, but the master plan that the town has, I don't think, believe, included a, a dog park. Good. 
But if you really want one, Ron. <laughs> you know, man, Mr. Feliciano passed away last week with a Friday. Oh, yeah. I saw that. I'm sorry to hear that. All right, anybody else? I'm I've sorry, got Jason. one question, uh, and just to see if I understand this right. The, the weekly updates that we get, um, the, there was some comment here a month or two ago with the uh, future plans with the camera system or something to better inspect that sewer line with the I&I mm -hmm. concerns. And uh, I've just noticed over the last couple of weeks, I'm just asking this question to clarify, the water treatment plant in their report shows that we average around 700 to 800,000 gallons of water into the system per week? Uh, we had <coughs> one week where the volume was exceeded that because we had a couple of trucks that were hauling water to both the campground and some other locations. Okay. So I think we had a, a, a high week of, I think it was eight or 900,000 gallons. Okay, well my concern with this comes with, and I've looked back in weeks past, the average in seven to 800,000 Per week from the water sure. treatment plant, yet our sewer plants average in over a million gallons mm -hmm. of water per day. Mm -hmm. And when I look at those numbers, I, st I still keep thinking about this concern with the creek and in that, and just wanted to make sure that that's a priority that we look at. Because I'm just thinking about the equipment and the pumps and everything treating this when you wouldn't think there'd be more coming much more coming in than what the average daily mm -hmm. fresh water is because to flush a toilet or whatever, that water's got to be used to, really to go, exactly. so, okay. No, uh, and, and the FY24 budget does include uh, funding for Lynn and Brian to pursue video inspection of some of the creek crossings uh, and some of the other points that we believe would be the most likely candidates yeah. for I&I &I intrusion. Yeah. Um, so yes, sir, no, we, 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 we that is a constant concern yeah. for I, I just the wastewater plant. Yeah, the so. numbers are really shocking when you look at it close. Mm -hmm. so, okay, just want to make sure I was understanding it. All right, and thanks. The good news is is that, that that million gallon is actually lower than it had been because when we did the, the lining a year and a half ago of, of the trunk, we did reduce it about 150 to 200,000 gallons of, of base flow. Oh, that's wow. good here. So wow. it, it, yeah. there, there are... Uh, it was an expensive project, and, and these other projects, once we determine areas that do need lining, um, they're, they're not cheap, but they, they are effective for a little while. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Good. Anybody else? Lonnie, nice having you with us this yeah, evening. No problem. <laughs> Nothing else. We're adjourned. I thought you were going to have a 10-minute meeting tonight. <laughs>